Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. So in the last couple of videos, we took a look at Aftershock 3. Now you guys asked me for a piece of software that you can just simply buy that will just do the trick when it comes to photo editing because you don't want to keep paying for Lightroom. So I found Aftershot 3 to be a really good alternative. I contacted Corel and I asked them if they could possibly provide me a copy of the software for free for every one of my subscribers. They said yes. Can you believe it? Anyways, they did. And if you didn't get yourself a copy in the last video, go down in the description below, click on the link. It'll head you over to Corel's site. They're going to want first name, last name, maybe email address, and you're going to get a license to the software for nothing. So if you haven't watched the last video, I talked about the actual import and basic editing of photos within the software. Really good. Take a look at that video if you haven't seen it. In this video, we're going to look at the actual exporting as well as watermarking. So before I go on and on and on and on, let's go and jump right into the software. So here we are with the two images that we edited from the last video. We're going to move into now watermarking. Watermarking is absolutely mission critical, as we all know. If your image does not have a watermark on it or at least IPTC information baked into the file saying who the creator is, it's basically orphaned work. And orphaned work is public domain. That means that anybody can use it and you have absolutely no recourse. So let's go ahead and select one of the images and now move into the watermark tab. Now under watermark, you have two different methods of watermarking your work. You can either use an image or simply text. I personally like text, but I'm going to show you how to do both. So let's go ahead and use the image first. Click on the image and then browse to find a PNG. So I'm going to select here J. Christina logo and I'm going to select the small version so you can change the size and you can also change the horizontal position, the vertical position and the opacity. I personally like to bump it in using the horizontal position by one and bump it up using the vertical position by one to just kind of take it off that edge. As far as opacity, 30% is really good for me. I don't like it too bright because I think it takes away from the image. So I usually go with about 30%. So that's how you do an image based watermark. Now for me, I like text. Let's go ahead and click on text here. And now you can see the image is gone and you have a line. We can put on this line whatever we want. It could be copyright, it could be your name, whatever it is. Let's say photo by J. Christina. There you go. Now that's huge, right? Let's go ahead and shrink that. Uh, let's make it like a two. I think that's a good size for this. And as far as the opacity, that's pretty good, 30%. Once again, we have it bumped in using horizontal positioning of one and vertical positioning of one. What I want to do now is create a preset for this specific watermark. So I click on create. Let's go ahead and name that watermark test and now click OK. Now, that specific watermark in the lower left hand corner with that specific typeface and that size and everything about that is now in a preset. Now we can use that preset later when we bake it into the image on export. So let's move into the next tab where it says metadata. Now metadata is very, very important. Now we can see here that we have basic IPTC information. Now this is mission critical. No matter what, you need to fill this out. We have creator, Joseph Christina, copyright, Joseph Christina. You can put copyright 2016, whatever you want, you can put inside these fields because these fields get baked into the image like I was telling you. The other area that I really like to fill out is under photographer. Now here I have creator, my name, the city, state, zip code, phone number, email address, the website, all of this information. Now this metadata could be copied from one image to another image. You could have different metadata for different images, for different folders, however you want to do it. So now let's move into the export. This is the fun stuff. I'm going to go ahead and change my filter instead of from four stars to three stars. And this way we have some more images to play around with. I'm just going to select five of them for export. What we're going to do here is we're going to click on file and then we're going to go to export with batch preset. Then we're going to click new batch preset. Now here's where the magic happens guys. So you select source folder. I'm going to change it to choose folder. 
instead of sending everything to my source folder. I have a folder called prints and it's empty right now. I'm going to select that. That's where all of these pictures are going to go. It's just as a subfolder in the main folder. This way, the main folder doesn't get completely clogged with all of these images that we're going to now create. From here, we're going to select quality 100%. It's a JPEG, we can leave it a JPEG, we can do a TIFF. Now we're gonna do prints first. The first prints that we're gonna do are four by sixes. So I'm gonna change the width and the height here to 1800 by 1200. I know that is a four by six. Then I'm gonna click on output name. We're not gonna change the name on output. What we are going to do is change the subfolder. So the subfolder is gonna be called prints dash four by six. And then we're going to select here additional image settings. Now here we're going to hit the plus button because we're going to add our preset that we just created. And we scroll down to watermark test and hit OK. Finally, we click on metadata. And in the metadata, we're going to tell it to embed the copyright information. And we're going to change the DPI output to 300 DPI because these are going to be printable four by sixes. Under post processing, we're going to leave these alone. So now we can just hit OK and it's going to create those six images that are four by sixes. That's great. But how about if we want to do maybe some web ready images also? So let's go ahead and do that. I hit the plus right here and say add file output. From here I'm going to change it once again to 100% and for the size we're going to do the 640 by 480. Then we click output name. Now we're going to change the subfolder. The subfolder we're going to call web ready. Then we click on additional image settings and once again we click the plus and come down to watermark test. That's the preset that we created. Finally we click on metadata and embed copyright and change the DPI to 72 DPI this time because it's going to be for web use only. Then in post processing, once again, we leave this alone. So that's it. It's going to do two different processes. One, it's going to create a four by six that's printable. And then two, it's going to create a web ready 640 by 480 size image. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the two different sizes that it created. And we're going to look at the same image. So let's take a look at this 0909 portrait. And this is the four by six size. And there it is. And now under the web ready, we select the exact same image 0909. And there you go. That's the web ready size. So this is really simple and fast. And for example, if you are a wedding photographer, maybe you need to do eight by tens and four by sixes and five by sevens and maybe some web ready and maybe some thumbnails or whatever it is. You can literally queue it all up and then leave the studio. When you get back, you'll be ready to upload or go to print. So if you didn't download your free copy of Aftershot yet, go down and subscribe to the channel and then look in the description area. You'll see a URL that takes you over to Corel. Click on that and go get your license. It's free from me. So that's it guys. If you like the content, please throw me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to head over to my storefront over at jchristina.com where you can find some photography tools I've invented over the years and some of them might be good for you. So that's it guys. Don't forget to subscribe, 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 and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.